Fed batch and continuous fermentations are more commonly found in industrial applications as it requires more expensive and additional equipment to run. They are used because of the increased productivity over batch fermentation. To review, batch fermentation is the most common. It consists of adding all of the meeting components into a single batch. It is simple and can be run with little technical experience, but there is limited control over cell growth and is less productive than other processes. This is partially because of the production of toxic byproducts, but batch fermentations result in far less cell mass than fed batch. Cells grow through division, which results in exponential growth. This growth can be limited when a nutrient is used up as well as physical limitations of having too many cells in a fermenter. Cells increase according to the formula shown here where an initial amount of cells increases by a factor of e to the mu t where mu is the growth rate and t is time. The doubling time, which is a measure of how fast cells are growing, can be calculated by dividing the natural log of 2 by the growth rate mu. Continuous cultures are where the culture is growing for an indefinite amount of time by removing cells and adding fresh media to keep the cell density at a constant amount. This is more common for production of chemicals which are typically secreted from the cells and can be easily separated from spent broth. The advantage of this system is that because it is run continuously, the setup and breakdown time typical for other fermentations is reduced and cells remain in the same state and can produce the product over longer periods of time than batch or fed batch fermentations. This type of fermentation is highly controllable through the use of pumps to remove cells and other pumps to add back media which can be automated based on growth predictions. The disadvantage is that this system does not work well for production of recombinant proteins which rely on chemical inducers that work more efficiently with higher cell density cultures. The process is difficult and there can be contamination or mutation of strains as they grow over time. The chemostat is the most common type of continuous culture. In this setup, one nutrient is limiting but all others are in surplus. Addition of the limiting nutrient can be used to control growth. The nutrient is taken up by all cells and growth is proportional to the amount of nutrient added. Cells are removed to maintain the same cell density and under these conditions cells should remain in the same growth state as product is produced. The rate of addition of the limiting nutrient and removal of cells or effluent rate should be equal so volume remains the same. Under these conditions the biomass concentration should be constant. The limiting nutrient under these conditions should not build up and its concentration during growth in the fermenter is zero. The flow rates into and out of the fermenter should be taken into consideration along with any other additions such as acid, base, or antifoam. The overall flow rate should remain constant so the volume inside the fermenter doesn't change. Cell recycle culture involves removal of spent media and bulk addition of fresh media, leaving cells in the bioreactor. Cell numbers and product increase over time, but progressively more dead cells can reduce yields over time. There is also chance of contamination, depending on the skill of the operator and the length of the production cycle. In fed batch culture, the culture is initially grown in batch phase, then nutrients are fed in at a controlled rate. The process is relatively simple, but the growth rate will need to be determined or feed can be added in a linear fashion. The growth of cells is more efficient and controlled with less formation of byproducts such as acids. Because cells are grown in a more controlled fashion than batch, it is actually easier to control oxygen transfer and temperature with more biomass being produced as compared to batch methods. This advantage is that the yield may decrease making downstream processing more difficult. It is more technically challenging than batch culture as well. The operator must have a good understanding of the microbiology of the organism in order to calculate the growth rate and productivity is reduced compared to continuous culture because of downtime between batches. In order to run a fed batch fermentation, the feed rate needs to be calculated according to the formula shown, where F sub T is the volumetric feed rate, mu is the specific growth rate, Y sub XS is the biomass yield substrate coefficient, X sub B is a dry biomass concentration, 
V sub B is a culture volume, S sub F is the substrate concentration, and T is time. The feed rate is equal to mu divided by the yield, which is the specific substrate utilization rate. This is multiplied by the total biomass X sub B, dry biomass times V sub B, or volume, and divided by the substrate concentration. The feed rate grows proportionally to the cell mass, which can be calculated by multiplying the feed rate by e to the mu t. In this example, mu is 2, which corresponds to a doubling time of about 20 minutes. The yield on glucose is about 0.5. For a culture at an OD of 10, the dry cell has, or x sub b, is determined by multiplying the OD by a factor of 0.35, to account for all the water held by the wet biomass. In our example, the reactor volume is 1.5 liters, which is less than the final desired volume of 2 liters. Fed batch usually starts at a volume much lower than the final volume to account for the feed added. The concentration of the substrate glucose is 700 grams per liter. If we multiply all of these factors out, we get a feed rate of 0.5 mils per minute. One thing that should be considered is that for mu greater than 0.17, acetate can accumulate, so a lower feed rate is desirable. In another example, if the growth rate is 0.08, then the feed rate would be about 0.02 mils per minute, an increase based on E to the mu T. Feed can also be based on conditions inside the fermenter measured by sensors. Oxygen levels can trigger a feed pump when demand decreases. The decrease in oxygen demand is linked to the substrate being used up, so more would then be added. Control can be based on pH, which increases when substrate is used up, triggering the feed pump. The substrate concentration itself can be measured either directly or indirectly, and a feedback loop can set up to feed when substrate levels decrease. These alternate feed strategies have the advantage that cells are not overfed by blindly adding feed based on a calculated feed rate as in traditional fed batch strategies. However, operator input is limited and cultures can still exceed the oxygen transfer rate or toxic byproducts could be produced due to rapid growth of cells. In conclusion, fed batch fermentation can be a more efficient way to produce cells, but care must be taken in the experimental design.